All right, in this video, we are going to address the authority of Jesus Christ that we have as believers. We are going to define the authority that we have as general believers to the authority that is given to uh, leaders, for example. I can't tell you how many times I've had people uh, say something or comment saying, well, yeah, of course Jesus could heal or Jesus could do this or Jesus could do that, but let's see you do it or you, you walk in that. <clears throat> So we need to understand exactly what G the authority that Jesus was operating in and why we can do some of those same works that Jesus did and even greater works yet. Um, but we need to be able to understand this and explain this to people and say, okay, this is why that if the Lord chooses to do this through me, then I can do this. You know, it's, it's Christ in me doing the works. Just like Jesus said, it's the Father in me who dwells in me who does the works. But we need to be able to understand this because there are elements of the charismatic church that have that have then taken this too far, where it's like you, you, they come up with with certain doctrines of well, let's just go raise people from the dead, and we're just going to pray for everyone to be raised from the dead, and certain things like that, or everyone we pray for should be healed, and that's just not the case. That's that actually contradicts scripture. So the charismatic church, you know, what they've done is they've taken. Uh, elements from the word of faith doctrine and they've mixed it and they've preached it and it just sows confusion into the church. Okay. So it, it, we're going to go, we're going to discuss all of that. So let's just pray real quick. Father, I just ask for your presence to come. I ask for your anointing to come. I ask for the fire of God to come. I ask for everyone who watches this Lord, that you would touch with the spirit of God that the fire of God would come on them, that the presence of God would come on them. I pray for an inward burning in everyone who watches this, in everyone who hears this right now, Father. I pray for the inward burning of the Lord Jesus Christ to know you in a greater way, to go deeper and deeper and deeper into you, Father to understand the kingdom. I pray for the keys of the kingdom to be released. I pray for wisdom and understanding, a spirit of wisdom and revelation to be released. In Jesus Christ's name, Father, let the keys be released. Understanding wisdom, Holy Spirit, ignite the fire of God in people's hearts. Ignite the burning in people's hearts, Holy Spirit. Release it now, release it now, release it now over everyone watching. Father, let us go deeper into you, deeper into the understanding of your son. Prepare us for the end of the age. Prepare us to become the bride. Purify your remnant with your refiner's fire, Father. Purify your remnant, make us pure without spot and wrinkle. Release your wisdom, understanding, and grace, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. All right. We've got to understand this key thing, guys, that when Jesus came into the flesh, when Jesus, as Son of God, came into the flesh, entered a body, he became man as well. So he was fully God and fully man. But when he walked on the earth, ministering, healing the sick, raising the dead, doing everything that he did, he did it as son of man, not son of God. Okay, yes, he was son of God as well, but he ministered as a man under the unction and power of the Holy Spirit, only doing those things that he saw his father doing. Okay, so we're going to break this down and go into this. He temporarily gave up his power. He temporarily confined himself to one physical body and he was no longer omnipresent. Okay, Jesus was not all over the world all at once. He was in one body at one place at one time. Okay, we're going to talk about all of this. Um, Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 8 Having this attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ, look to him as your example and selfless humility, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, as one with him possessing the fullness of all divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, he did not regard equality with God a thing to be asserted 
as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it, but emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up his outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity by assuming the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, he became completely human with, but was without sin, being fully God, fully man, after he was found in terms of his outward appearance as a man for he divine for a divinely appointed time. He humbled himself still further by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death, even death on the cross. So that's from, that's from the Amplified Version. But I believe the Amplified explains that very well in a way for us to understand that Jesus was, he emptied himself of the power of God as the Son of God. And he walked as the Son of Man, as a servant of man, to demonstrate what it would be like for a man to walk under the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Jesus didn't die on the cross as son of God. He died on the cross as son of man. See, there, there, there had to be a man that was sacrificed for man's sin, right? A man who was without spot, without wrinkle, a man that was without blemish, a perfect sacrifice. And Jesus walked on this earth as a man without sin. Of course, he was without sin as God, of course, but as a man, he walked without sin. And it was that sacrifice that the Father accepted in our place, in our stead. The propitiation for our sins. Okay, so Jesus' omnipresence. He was only at one place at one time. Now, there is that scripture in John, John 3.13 that says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. So yes, it makes reference to, yes, Jesus did walk with the Father in heaven when he would, in the Spirit. Okay, yes, his Spirit could be caught up, just like Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians 12, 2 through 4, where he was caught up to heaven, right? I mean, there's that reference that Jesus makes that, yes, he walked in the Spirit with the Father in heaven, and he lived a lifestyle of that of the secret place of drawing away to into the wilderness and praying and being before the Father in heaven, absolutely. But we're talking about when he was in his physical body as a man, walk for 33 and a half years walking on the earth, right? He was in one location. He wasn't in the United States like the Mormons preach. He wasn't in other places. He was in Israel. He was in one physical location. He was not he was no longer omnipresent as the Son of God. He gave that power up as the son of God. He humbled himself as the form of a servant, walked as, yes, he was fully God, yet fully man in one body. Okay, we need to understand that. <clears throat> Jesus was not uh, all powerful, okay, at, at, when he walked as the son of God, or excuse me, as the son of man on the earth. He was clearly the Son of God still, but he gave up that power as the Son of God, his infinite power and his infinite authority as he walked on the earth. Peter uh, explains this in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. He says, How God anointed Jesus Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So God the Father had to anoint God the Son with the Holy Spirit and power. So if Jesus was already carrying his full authority, full power, when he was walking on the earth as the Son of Man, then why does God the Father have to anoint God the Son with God the Holy Spirit and power? You see what I'm saying here? The only reason that God the Father has to anoint God the Son with God the Holy Spirit and with power is because he willfully laid it down when he was walking on the earth as son of man, okay? That he did that as an example to us as someone who is fully yielded to God, right? Fully yielded to the Father, only doing those things they're seeing the Father doing. Fully yielded to the will of God who has denied their own self-interest, their own desires, their own will, and is only operating by the will of God what 
could that person do under the unction and power of the Holy Spirit, someone who is fully yielded? Jesus shows us what a person can do. The will of the Father, right? Not what we want. Not, not me going and saying, you know what? There was uh, 10 people that died today in the county, so I'm going to go. I have a good idea. I'm going to go pray for each one of them and raise them all from the dead. See, <clears throat> that's my own good idea, and that's not going to happen, which is being taught in some circles of the charismatic church. It's a bunch of crap, and it's heresy, right? It's doing what the Father's doing. Now, if the Father says there's a certain person who died, shows you and I want to raise him from the dead, and you go and pray for that person, and the person's raised from the dead, that's different. That's the Father showing you what to do, and you doing it because you're abiding in him, and he's in you, and you're listening to what he's saying. That's what we're talking about here. God had to anoint Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power. We can see that Jesus didn't even, didn't even begin public ministry until the age of 30. So it wasn't like Jesus was going around doing all these miracles moving in power because it's, well, of course it's Jesus. You know, I mean, that's, that's the theology of some people in the church. Well, of course Jesus could do the miracles. It's Jesus, you know, I mean, and they don't understand this. They do not understand that. No, it, Jesus was anointed by the Holy spirit and power from the father to do the miracles, to do the works, to heal all who were oppressed by the devil, right? That's why Jesus could do it as a man yielded to the father operating in his power and his authority. So we got, we have to be able to articulate this. We have to be able to explain this to people because they're just, bit, well, of course, Jesus did that, but, you, but you're just, you're just a nobody, right? That's, that's, you can't do this. Of course, Jesus did it. He's the son of God. Jesus laid down his power as the Son of God, and he did it as the Son of Man under the power of the Holy Spirit by the authority of the Father. That's what we have to be able to explain to people. <clears throat> so there's this scripture in uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 14 through 15, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. See, that's the beginning of his public ministry. He returned in the power of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him when he was baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist. He went into the wilderness. He was tested by the devil. When he passed the test, then he came forth in the power of the Spirit. That's when he began his public ministry. That's when he began doing the works of power the demonstration is not prior to that. Oh, he was still son of God prior to that. Son of God who laid down all his power and was submitted to the Father waiting for the proper time. Not just, not just reading the scriptures of the Old Testament and saying, well, hey, look, you know what? Moses parted the Red Sea, so I'm gonna go out and part the Red Sea. No, no, that's not how it works, see? See, the charismatic church teaches this. Oh, well, you see here, Jesus says, you know, um, to heal the sick and cast out demons. So because I've read it in the Bible, it's for me right now and I'm going to go do it. That's a heresy from the, the charismatic church. No, Jesus would speak to them personally, give them power and authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. And then he sent them out. This whole thing is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because if it's just about, well, oh, look, Jesus says, uh, heal the sick and cast out demons in the scripture, that means I can do it. Well, then it's, then it's, well, Jesus says you're saved, then I guess I'm saved. Or then you could read the scriptures and say, well, hey, look, Moses uh, parted the Red Sea, so I guess I can go part the Red Sea. Or, hey, Peter walked on water, so I guess I can go walk on water. Well, why don't you go try parting a lake and see what happens. Just because you read it in the scripture, go try it and see what happens. Because I guarantee that lake's not going to part unless the Father tells you to do it, right? Or go try walking on water unless the Father tells you to walk on water. Because what's going to happen is you're going to fall right into the water. A lot of people in the charismatic church have presumption rather than faith. Presumption is when you read the scripture and say, well, it, it applies to me because they did it. That's called naming and claiming, which is a false doctrine 
from the Word of Faith movement. Go ahead and name and claim it. Go ahead and presume on the Word of God. I guarantee you'll go out and you'll fail. Bottom line. Well, Enoch was caught up. He walked with God and then he was not. So why don't you try going out and, 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 and just being caught up? It's not going to happen unless God does it. <laughs> unless God says, throw your rod down, right? And it'll become a serpent like he did with Moses. It's not going to happen. You're going to take your rod and you're going to throw it on the ground. And it's going to be a rod. Just because it's in the scripture and you try to do it doesn't mean it's going to happen. But see, the charismatic church teaches this. Well, it, you know, it's in the scripture, you know, and, and here's what happens. People go out and pray for someone and they don't get healed. People go out and try to cast out demons and they don't get and demons don't get cast out. People try and go out and raise the dead and the dead don't get raised. People try to go out and cleanse the lepers and the lepers don't get cleansed. Why? Because God didn't say to you personally, I have given you now as my disciple power and authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. Now go do it. The issue is discipleship. He gave that to his disciples, guys. It, he didn't say, well, now that you've read it <laughs> and you're presuming upon the scriptures and you're presuming upon the authority and power that you have, right? That's not what it's about. Did he tell you personally? He didn't even give his own disciples power and authority until they reached a certain point in that discipleship process. The apostles, he didn't even give it to them until a certain point. Matthew chapter 10, Luke chapter 9, they had to reach a certain point in that place with Christ of their training, uh, uh, of their maturing. And then he said, okay, now I'm giving it to you. They weren't doing any of that before until he said, here it is. See, it's when he gives that, all of a sudden there's no trying, right? This is what the charismatic church teaches. We'll just go practice praying for people. Go practice praying for healing. Is that what Jesus taught? Think about this, guys. Did he tell his apostles, okay, guys, I want you to go practice praying for people, right? The crap that we make up, guys. Okay, now that we've gone through the healing school, right? The, the week-long healing school, we've learned the seven-point prayer, okay? The, the, the seven steps to, to praying for the sick, and this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Okay, now you guys got to go practice praying for people. I mean, look at the crap that's being taught. This is not what Jesus did, guys. He said, here is the power and authority. Now go do it. Go preach the kingdom, in that interest, he said, go preach the kingdom. He said, don't go preach. He didn't say, go preach healing. Go Here, go preach deliverance. Go, go, go preach the prayer model. Go preach impartation. Go preach revival. He didn't say, preach any of that. He said, go preach the kingdom of God. Heal the sick and cast out demons. Just go do it. Once he gave them the authority and the power, he said, go do it. The message in the charismatic church is wrong. No, the message should be discipleship. Picking up your cross and following him. The denial of yourself. The crucifixion of your own self, your own wants, your own interests, your own desires, your own ministry. All of it crucified with Christ, no longer living. Then Christ living through you to a place of discipleship where the Lord Jesus Christ says, here you go. Power and authority to heal the sick. Go preach the kingdom. The charismatic church is preaching impartation. I'm not against impartation. I'm just saying that's not what Jesus did. He, he preached the cross. It was pick up your cross. It's denial of self. We've missed the mark. And we need to repent and get back to the ministry of Jesus following him as disciples, if we really want to unlock this power and authority thing. Lord Jesus Christ, help us, and especially help the charismatic church that missed it and is sowing all this confusion. Here's what Jesus said in John 
chapter 5, verse 19. So the son answered and said to them, I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something that he sees the father doing. For whatever things the father does, the son also does in the same way. So when it came to healing a blind person, when it came to spitting in the mud and or spitting in the clay and making mud and putting it in his eyes and say, go wash in the pool, Salome. Jesus had to hear from the father, see what the father's doing. Then Jesus did likewise. And then the man was healed. And we come up with our formulas, guys. We come up with our formulas. And that's, that's not how it's done. We've got to follow Jesus. Not our seven-step prayer model, right? Jesus could only do what the Father was doing. Let's say, let's say the Father was doing it that way, spitting in the mud and then putting the mud in his eyes. And, say, and Jesus said, you know what? I'm gonna, I, I, don't wanna, I, I just want to command his eyes to be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Guess what? They wouldn't have been healed because that's what the Father, the father wasn't doing that. The only, Jesus could only operate in power by what the father was doing. He could not ap operate independently of the father. There's another scripture in Mark chapter six, verses five through six. And he could not, he could do no miracle there at all because of their unbelief, except that he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he wondered at their unbelief and he was going around the villages teaching. So he couldn't do any miracles. He couldn't do any Notable, remarkable miracles like seeing a limb grow out or seeing blind eyes open or seeing a paralytic healed in that place because they did not honor him. They did not honor him. So he could do nothing there except for heal a few sick people. You see that? Their unbelief, their lack of faith, their lack of honor in God, their lack of honoring God hindered him from doing miracles, notable, remarkable miracles. Now, it's not that Jesus, it's not that the Father couldn't heal someone. If, he, if the Father wants to think it, our heart would stop. Okay, so the Father can do whatever he wants to. It's that the Father wasn't doing anything because of the response of the people. So Jesus couldn't do anything. Understand that because Jesus is operating by the power of God, by the authority of the Father. And because the father was seeing their unbelief and their lack, their lack of faith, their, their dishonor, their lack of honor. It's like, oh, I'm not doing any, I'm not doing, I'm not doing any notable, remarkable miracles among them. Sure, I'll heal a few sick people. And so Jesus was able to do that. But we can clearly see here that Jesus as son of man operating under the power of the Holy Spirit was hindered from doing miracles here. So this is for all those people who would say, well, of course Jesus could do miracles. He's the son of God. Well, he didn't there, did he? He couldn't do any miracles there, could he? Because the father wasn't doing the miracles because Jesus as son of man was operating only by what he saw the Father doing and under the power of the Holy Spirit, and he was hindered from doing miracles there. You know, Satan's temptation of Jesus in Luke 4, all the, the things that he tempted him on, turn these stones into bread, right? Well, guess what? The Father wasn't turning the stones into bread, and Jesus was operating as Son of Man with complete dependence on the Father, only doing those things he saw the Father doing, so the Satan was trying to tempt Jesus to act independently of the Father and to do something that the Father wasn't doing. Throw yourself from the pinnacle, right? Well, the Father wasn't doing that. Prove that you're the Son of God. Do this, right? Would you, that was the temptation. Prove it. Do this. Act independently of the Father. Same kind of thing that's going on in the charismatic church. Charismatic churches many times is actually teaching just, hey, listen, go raise the dead, go do this, go. And the father's not sane doing that. We need to understand that, guys. It's getting very scary and the charismatic church is echoing the voice of Satan. 
go pray for this dead. Go pray for all the dead. Go pray for everyone. Is the father saying that? Because let me tell you something. If the father's saying it, that person will be raised from the dead. Because it has nothing to do with you. Pray. It has nothing to do with you practicing prayer. It has everything to do with the father raising them from the dead. All you have to do is do what the father's doing, right? It's not you doing it. It's the father who does it. But Satan is getting real sly, right? Just like he tried to tell Jesus, go do this. Go do this. Turn these stones into bread. Right? Isn't that, isn't that what the charismatic church is teaching? Go do this. And you, see, here's the test of the Son of God. Here's the test in this, guys. Can you wait to go pray for people? Can you wait? Jesus waited. He wasn't praying for people for 30 years. And even when Satan was tempting him, go act independently, go pray. For, he wasn't praying for anyone. He wasn't going out and do, he wasn't falling to Satan's temptation of just go pray for people, right? Question is, is that what the charismatic church is doing? Are we listening to the Father or are we listening to the doctrine of the charismatic church? What are we listening to? See, I'm preaching Christ. I'm preaching obedience to the Father. That's what I'm saying. What's the charismatic church teaching? A doctrine? A charismatic theology? Can we see the difference here? I'm saying I'm preaching discipleship unto the Lamb of God. Hear from Him. Abide in Him. Follow Him. Not a doctrine from the charismatic church. If we're going to carry true authority, it's going to be because the cross has had its work in us. We've let Jesus work in us. And we've passed the test of only doing what the Father's doing. And sometimes that's wait. Wait until the Lord actually moves and the Lord actually releases us to minister in power and authority. All right, guys, I'm going to come back and do a part two. Um, I'm going to cut the video here, and I'll, I'll uh, come back and, and do a part two. One second.